NoSQL, often referred to as not only SQL or non-relational databases, store data differently than traditional relational databases. They use different data models, including documents, key-value stores, white column stores, and graphs. And this flexibility makes them a good fit for large and unstructured datasets or situations where data structures evolve rapidly. One of the core differences between NoSQL and relational databases is that they do not have relations the same way as SQL databases have, so we cannot do complex joins and queries as in SQL, and if you need to combine data from different sources, you may need to handle that within your application code. NoSQL databases come with a couple of benefits. The first one is that they have flexible schema. They often have a schema-less design and it allows us to store data without predefined structures. And this is useful for data that has a complex or ever-changing structure. The biggest limitation that NoSQL databases solve is scale, and they are very good at horizontal scaling. By distributing data across multiple servers, you can handle massive datasets and high traffic loads. And this can be very important for web applications that experience spikes in usage. And sometimes they are good for faster reads and writes. If your data doesn't have a lot of complex relationships and you're primarily storing and retrieving individual units of information, then NoSQL databases, especially the key value stores, can be faster due to less complex querying. And they also provide development agility because the flexible schema and focus on specific data models can streamline our development for certain applications. Now let's see the different types of NoSQL databases. The first type is key value stores. In key value stores, data is stored as simple key value pairs, like a giant hash map or dictionary. They store data as pairs of unique keys and associated values. And the value here can be simple string or complex data structure or even blobs of data. The biggest advantage of key value stores is their simplicity and speed, since they primarily reside in RAM, making lookups is extremely fast from here. Some key value store examples are Redis and Memcached. We use Redis for example when we want to temporarily store frequently accessed data to speed up websites and applications. And it works very well for caching or session data management. The next type is document stores. In document stores, the data is stored as JSON-like documents, which allows us to have complex data structures within a single record. The most popular example of NoSQL data stores, and overall the most popular NoSQL database, is MongoDB, and it internally stores data as BSON, binary JSON, which is faster compared to JSON itself when it comes to querying the data. And document stores also have some type of primary key that helps us identify each document, but there is no schema and no rigid table structure, and fields can vary from document to document. Here, the related data is often stored together within the same document, and it improves the read performance for common queries. Some other document store examples are AWS DocumentDB or Firestore in GCP or CouchDB. The next type is white column stores. In white column stores, data is stored in tables, rows, and dynamic columns. Columns can be grouped into column families, and unlike relational databases, here columns can be added on the fly, which is good for data with evolving schemas. White column database examples are Apache Cassandra or Azure's Cosmos DB, and they can handle massive scales, and they are very good for a lot of write operations. It is specifically designed to be distributed across hundreds of thousands of nodes. So they are great for storing huge amounts of data, and scaling is easy across many machines. They can also handle lots of writes. And the last common type is graph databases. These databases focus on storing entities as nodes and their relationships as edges, forming graph structures. And both nodes and edges can have properties. Some examples are Neo4G, Amazon's Neptune service, or DGraph. For example, Amazon uses its Neptune Graph database service for product recommendation. You probably have seen customers who bought this also bought and some other product recommendation. And this is utilizing the Graph database to identify which products you might be interested in. And also Meta primarily relies on graph database called Tao, which is internally developed for representing and analyzing connections between people, for example connections between Instagram and Facebook profiles. So graph databases are effective for storing and querying complex relationships. Next, let's talk about scalability of NoSQL databases. 
These databases are designed to scale horizontally and it means you can add more commodity servers to a cluster and easily increase storage space and processing power. This is much simpler than trying to scale an SQL database. Many NoSQL databases support sharding out of the box. Sharding is the process of distributing data across multiple nodes and this lets us avoid the limitations of a single machine and tackle massive datasets. But traditional relational databases tend to scale vertically. This means you can add more RAM, CPU and faster storage to a single more powerful machine, but it is not designed to scale horizontally. While horizontal scaling in SQL databases is possible, it's complex. For example, to do sharding, you have to manually split data across multiple machines and it's a complex task for relational databases. It can get complicated when you want to do joins. What if you're trying to do joins and some of the data is in another shard? There are lots of edge cases to consider when sharding relational databases. You can also replicate SQL databases, but primarily for read scaling and fault tolerance, and it often doesn't address write scalability in the same way as NoSQL sharding. Non-relational databases drop the ACID properties, but they have their own model, which is called base model, and it stands for basically available, soft state, and eventual consistency. What this means is that it prioritizes keeping the system available for reads and writes and even during network partitions or node failures. And eventual consistency part means that data changes might not be instantly reflected across all replicas, but the system will eventually converge to a consistent state, and this trade-off is what allows us for greater scalability. To summarize, NoSQL databases have lots of advantages over SQL databases, but relational databases have their own advantages, for example ACID properties, they guarantee that transactions are reliable and data remains consistent even in the case of failures. SQL's strength lies in its ability to perform complex joins and multiple tables, making it excellent choice for data analysis and reporting. They also enforce a rigid schema, and this ensures that data conforms to a specific structure. They are also good for structured data, if your data has a well-defined structure and requires complex joins between tables, a relational database might be better. They also enforce data integrity through features like normalization and referential constraints, and this might be critical for some financial or accounting applications. SQL databases are still the go-to for banking systems, financial reporting systems, and multi-step transactions because they ensure reliable transactions and they prevent data corruption. If you're interested more about SQL databases, I recommend you check out this SQL tutorial next. Thanks for watching. For important updates, subscribe to my newsletter and follow me for more content like this. See you next time.